Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. My name is Arnaud and I'm a software engineer at Collabora. I've been working uh, on the AGL application framework over the past few months, so I'm giving you an update about uh, what's going on in this area and where we're heading to. I'll start with defining what an application framework is and why we need one on AGL. But in fact, we already have one implementation of such a thing. So I'll give you a brief analysis of what the current implementation is and more specifically point out the problems and issues we're having with this framework. I'll expose then the reflections and choices we made for a new application framework and what we're going to include in the redesign and rework of this framework. Then talk to you quickly about what the current state is and introduce the next steps and uh, what we plan for the future. But first thing first, uh, AGL stands for Automotive Grade Linux. It's a Linux Foundation project aiming at providing a reusable and customizable system for building Linux systems for the automotive industry. It provides and targets automotive applications such as in-vehicle infotainment, which is stands by IVI in general, instrument clusters, and so on. So the application framework what is it and why do we need one? The first use of such a framework is to provide a unified way of developing and deploying applications. And by that I don't mean a framework is a software library or something like that, but instead it's mostly a set of rules and low-level implementations to allow developing user applications in a unified way, no matter who is doing the job and what, how uh, we can integrate it into the system. It's also designed to make integrations between applications and the base system predictable and safe, to ensure in particular that applications will not affect the system or other apps in unwanted ways or insecure ways and it basically sets the expectations for deliverables and integrations of applications into the final system. An app framework should provide the following features. It must be able to manage sessions, are in Unix sessions, uh, because we're obviously willing to make applications run as a user process and not a system process. So we will manage the sessions in which those user processes will be able to run. We also want to manage application lifecycle from startup to termination and potentially for sensitive services have them restart automatically when they crash. We also want the application framework to provide or at least specify a standard set of APIs so that applications can use the underlying systems services. We also need a common inter-process communication mechanism so all the IPCs can be clearly uh, handled and controlled. And last but not least, uh, an application framework must provide security and isolation of applications from the base system. Let's keep in mind that app developers are usually not the same people as the system developers and as such they don't necessarily have any knowledge of Yocto which is the base technology of AGL. So applications 
should be developed without having to interact with Yocto or deal with it in any way. And it should, as such, provide a convenient way to ease application deplo deployment and integration. So what about the current implementation of the app framework? Well, this is mostly a custom implementation with lots of software services and many different pieces which doesn't use any of the existing standards or best practice. Session management relies on the systemd libraries but they are handled by custom demons uh, specifically developed for the app framework. The application lifecycle management is likewise implemented through custom services and the inter-process communication is using a really specific format which is data serialized into a JSON format and then transported by WebSockets. So clearly something really unusual in this field. And the security aspects of the app framework are handled through SMAC, which is a Linux security module much like SE Linux or AppArmor. On this slide, you get a brief overview of how the current app framework is working. So you see the separation between the system processes and the user processes, which are on the top of the slide. And you'll see a few exotic things, I'd say, not non-standard elements at least, which are the AFM user and system daemon, the AFM main binding, the point of all of this is that for a single application, you have a binding service embedded into the application security context. You also have still in the user processes, the actual service running into its own context. And all of this is managed through the AFM user daemon for user processes and AFM main daemon for session management and all the security interface. Unfortunately, this approach comes with a number of issues. The first one, the most visible one at least, is the JSON of a WebSockets protocol. It's really something that isn't widespread in the industry and actually it's a wholly custom implementation which requires custom bindings and libraries for every language you would want to use for writing your application. It also comes with a significant performance overhead due to the nature of JSON and the WebSockets interface itself too. And it has to provide an abstraction for basically every system API the application developer might want to use. So you have a translation slash abstraction layer for APIs and it's of course biased because you want to, well, the app framework was designed with the goal of providing simple APIs and abstracting completely the complexity of the system APIs already existing. So a few choices were made and obviously this abstraction cannot fit every single use case you might have. So in this sense, the API abstractions themselves are biased. SMAC is also a problem because in the context of the AGL app framework, it's very complex and difficult to get right and it's not an easy piece to deal with. And finally, all these app framework have received absolutely no support nor adoption from the wider open source community. So this makes basically AGL the upstream for the whole app framework. It makes maintenance very difficult and complex. 
and requires significant engineering time to maintain and evolve this framework. So we decided to rework all of this, redesign from scratch mostly a new application framework which would be easier to deal with and easier to maintain. The first point for this is to rely on upstream projects and widely adopted technologies in the open source ecosystem. That way we can benefit from the work of the whole ecosystem and significantly reduce the engineering time we need to maintain the app framework itself. And with this goal in mind, we obviously want to limit to the bare minimum any custom implementation we would need for this framework or re-implementation as well. And all of this should make in the end, the new app framework easier and simpler to work with and hopefully make it more widely used and adopted. So for the first item, which is session management, the basic building block we're using is basically systemd as it provides everything we already need to manage user sessions including starting these sessions and monitoring the status and terminating those and so on. So by using a custom system D target, we can define a user session which is specific to AGL and have this session being started with a system level service and the session will contain pretty much every user service and user process needing to be started. With login D and uh, all the features of system D, we already have a pretty good privilege separation and a relatively normal and uh, useful level of security. Next topic is the inter-process communication and for that part we decided to rely mostly on Dbus. I'm saying mostly because there are a few cases where we need higher uh, high bandwidth data streams and Dbus is not the best choice for that. So that's a subject we still need to reflect a bit on and uh, we need to work on a bit more. In the end, Dbus still covers most of the needs and allows any application to make API, place API calls to system services and uh, to rely in the end on the, on the existing system and to be able to communicate with both the system services and other applications if you want to allow them to do so. Lots of services already provide a Dbus interface as it's a relatively standard technology now in the Linux world. And uh, just to put a few examples, Bluezy for Bluetooth, GeoClue for geolocation, Modem Manager, Network Manager, all provide already pretty complete Dbus interfaces so that user applications can make use of those services in a really in a quite simple way bindings and libraries exist for most languages so we don't have to maintain a specific or custom implementation of the ipc library we can just rely on what the community provides with the bus and uh, have access to this ipc system pretty much no matter what language the application is developed with. Regarding application lifecycle management, there are three use cases we want to address. The first one is background services. So that's services which would be started as user processes as soon as the session starts and which would continue to run 
throughout the session's duration. So these are started using systemd and we define systemd user services for the for those uh, for those ones and uh, the interest of using systemd is that we can first manage the life cycle of such services and have systemd restart them in case they fail automatically of course and monitor the status and uh, the service health in a sense but we can also make use of the system this sandboxing and technology and the security features to restrict the rights of a user process so it can for example we can allow or deny access to certain devices or simply allow access to all devices or deny it. We can also use C groups and namespace and capabilities to to make uh, the services more restricted and uh, we can also restrict which part of the file system they could uh, have access to. So that's a pretty much complete solution and it already allows to do quite a lot of advanced things simply by using systemd user units. The other use case is on-demand services. Some of those, one example could be a media player, do not need to run for the whole duration of the session, but they can be only needed by a few applications, and so we can have the service not be started when the session starts, but instead be automatically activated through Dbus every time an application requires it. And so we'll start the service through Dbus and it will be really used on demand and if you have a full a whole session during which you never need the media player then it won't be started at any time. Finally, the, for what I'm calling here the one-time applications, which could be, for example, a navigation application uh, requiring user interaction, we don't need to start those automatically or through Dbus, but we can simply have an app launcher service which will react to the user request to start this particular app pretty much what you have on your smartphones and you just have to touch the icon and get the application started. So applications and services would be discovered and enumerated using the desktop entry specification by Free Desktop, and we rely for that on desktop files, obviously, much like any desktop environment on Linux does nowadays and we also are able to discover Dbus activated services so we can also present them to the user if they might be useful and might require user inter interaction. The desktop entry specification also specifies a Dbus interface which is dedicated to activating applications that way. And so we really using and sticking to standard mechanisms and widely adopted technologies on that. Finally, re regarding the security aspects of the app framework, we still need a way to sandbox and contain applications, even those which would not be started through systemd. So we considered at some point Flatpak because it provides efficient sandboxing and is quite simple to deal with. Unfortunately, it lacks some fine-grained permissions in a few areas. For example, network access can be either granted or denied, but you can't limit it to a single family of protocols or to, or to a single uh, interface type. For example, you can't just 
tell him, tell the application that it can use IPv6 but not IPv4. So we, it's a bit limited in some ways. And the most problematic thing with Flatpak is that there's no proper support in Yocto for Flatpak applications. There is an existing Meta Flatpak layer. However, it's not been much maintained over the last few years. So it's not really fit for production right now. And it lacks several features such as starting up, not starting, but installing Flatpak applications directly on the image at bit, at bit time. So, on the topic of security, we're still considering which backend and which technology we should implement in the new app framework, or at least we should move forward. And uh, we're considering relying a bit more on systemd due to the reasons and the features I explained a bit before. Or we could also consider security modules such as AppArmor and maybe just have a mix of various technologies to make it more flexible and uh, more simple to deal with, depending on the use case we're trying to implement. So what's the current status of this app framework? Over the past few weeks, the old app framework was fully removed from AGL in the master branch. So we basically burned it to the ground in order to have a clean start and begin without the technical depth and historical depth we had with the old app framework. We've already implemented the session management bits with a new system level service and the user target, which are both systemd units. The AGL ser session service will start the AGL session target for the selected user and AGL session target will basically pull in all its dependencies and systemd will start any service and uh, application the target would depend on. So this part is relatively simple and already implemented for now. Next topic is the application lifecycle management. And for that, we had a bunch of existing user services, which are mostly AGL Compositor, the Wayland Compositor, Home Screen, which can be seen as the Wayland Shell or Window Manager, and Launcher, which is the graphical application you can use to display app icons and select which application you want to start. These existing services have been converted, I'd say, so they use systemd user services for their lifecycle management. They've been also uh, ripped off every bit of the old app framework, so we can start re-implementing our own framework on top of that. And these services are obviously wanted by the AGL session target, so they're automatically started when the session starts. These all targets, obviously the IVI use case, which needs a display and uh, most likely a touch screen for the user to interact with. But we can see a similar implementation being used for headless systems in the instrument cluster case, just with no requirement of user interaction. The principles are basically the same and uh, they, this can be translated and moved on for a different scenario. Uh, still on the topic of uh, application lifecycle management, Launcher, well, the name isn't quite right because Previously, it was uh, used to actually launch applications, but that's not the case anymore. It's only used for now to discover applications using desktop files. So it will go through all the standard uh, folders where such files should be found and uh, retrieves the icon and presses the desktop files so they can be displayed on the screen. And the actual starting 
and monitoring of uh, the applications is offloaded to a new launcher daemon, which is AppLaunchD. It's a really simple daemon which provides a debus interface with a method other applications can call to request a specific application to be started, either through command line or debus activation. AppLaunchD itself is started as a systemd user service and is started obviously as part of the user session. As I said, it can execute a specific command line or simply activate a debus service with the debus name of such a service. And it monitors the lifecycle and status of the started applications and it's able to notify other applications when an app successfully started and when it terminated, both by monitoring the process or by monitoring the Dbus name owning for Dbus services. So what's next for us? First, uh, we need to port existing demo apps to the new app framework as AGL had a bunch of demo applications which were quite interesting to show what's possible but they're all really tightly integrated into the old app framework so we need to port these ones to the new framework and make sure they can work without the all the custom plumbing that were present previously I've mentioned that Launcher has really a few features, so we're going to merge this with the home screen application so that we have less services and uh, also it makes much more sense to have one single application for those because otherwise you would have the Launcher request the application startup but still need to notify the home screen when the application actually started for it to show the window and uh, put it on the foreground. And having separate proce processes for that makes it a bit more complicated. We also need, and that may be the most important part of the remaining work, select a security backend and implement access control as part of the new app framework. And of course, we need to docu document all of those. Here are a few links that you can uh, have a look at in case you want to know more about AGL, the application framework, and the current implementation state. You also have the link to the repositories for the current implementation and current work. Please note this is all work in progress and depending on when you will see the, this video, uh, things may, will probably have evolved a bit more in one direction or another. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the chat. And thank you all for watching this presentation.